in this video we just going to see how to add the save such results or some results in our sub list so for that i have created a save search in my nature account so which says weekly transaction search results and this is a basic search on transaction record you look at the filter criteria as just three criteria type main line is true and internal ids on the results column wise it has around more than 10 fields so if i just run this you can see around two results as an output so we're gonna try to get these two results in our feedlet sublist so let's see how to get this ASUS results in our code so in order to do that i'm gonna make use of a module called as search module i'm gonna search for search module in my help center i can see there is a result with search module i'm gonna open that in our search module it provides an api called as search.load which allows you to load an existing save search in our ui and return as a search object so this search.load api is going to return the search object so i'm going to open this search.load api we just scroll down it just needs id as a parameter if you just scroll up also you can see that id is one of the main parameter and there is a type required if the save search to load uses a standalone search type otherwise it's an optional so as of now in our save search for the space search which we created does not require the type so i'm going to make use of id only so i'm going to copy the syntax go back to our code and place it below this in the place of id i'm going to paste my save search id which i have created in the netshoot so if i just edit the save search here there is a field called as id i'm going to copy that field id and i'm going to paste it in this place so now that we have loaded the search but we have to run this search and look through the results and drop it in the sublist also so in order to do that let's go back to our search module as we seen before the search.load api return search object so if i just scroll up we can see search object members also if i just click on the search object members link it takes me to the search object members it provides different options for me to run that search one is run run paste so i'm going to make use of this search.run api to run my search and the search.run is going to return some value as result set object so if i just check this result set object members it has this each where it is going to loop through each of the result in our page search so i'm going to make use of this run and this each api to loop through my results and run my object so let's open that search.run api and if i just scroll down it has a basic syntax along with dot each so i'm going to copy this complete syntax or the code and paste it in my code so this each function returns only 4000 results just keep that in mind when you have more number of results so as of now i just have two results so i'm just going to make use of each so we're gonna get some values from our save search results so in order to show some data like customer name internal id and the transaction number i have to retrieve three different values so i have already retrieved the customer name which is nothing but our entity so i'm gonna get the name as by using get text api and we're going to retrieve other two values so those two values are customer transaction number which is nothing but ran id and the next api which we're going to return or the next column which we're going to return is internal id so by default this result will have a method or key called as id so i'm going to store this in result.id so how did i come up with this result dot get text and get value apis or if i just go back to my netshoot account as I mentioned before, I have used this search.run first, which is going to return this as search.result set. And in our result set object members, we are using this result set dot each. If I just open this result set dot each, by default, this result dot each has a callback function, and that callback function has an argument called as result. So this result is part of some object members. So if I just go back to my search module and if i just scroll up we can see this result object members here so this result will match with this so i'm going to make use of this result dot get text get value and all those things to retrieve my column level values from my save search so from my column i want to return the name the entity name the transaction id and the internal ids so now let's see how to set these three values in my sub list so in order to do that again we have to go back to our help center I have to show those values in our sublist. Let's see if there is any API in our sublist object members. If I just scroll down, we can see there is an API called as sublist.set sublist value. I'm going to make use of this sublist.set sublist value API. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy this sublist.set sublist value API sample example and paste it in my code. 
So for this set subject value, there are three parameters: ID, line, and value. Let's see what is this ID means. So internal ID name of the line item field being set. So we have to pass the line item field. So the first column field we have is select column field, the checkbox field. So I'm not going to set any values of now. I'm going to set customer internal ID and the transaction number. So we have created sub list fields like by using add field. I'm going to copy the values like customer and paste it here. And let's see what is line value we have to pass. So if I just go back to my NetSuite help center. So the line says line number of this field. The first line number on a sub list is zero, not one. So the first line number we have to set is zero. And the value we have to pass, if it is a checkbox, we have to pass as TF. And if it is other than that, we can just pass whatever we have retrieved here. So let's say we're going to pass this line number as zero. And we're going to set the value as entity, which we retrieved. And let's upload this code and test whether the output works as we expected or not. So if I just go to our suitelet and if I refresh this page, okay, it says search is not defined. It's because we are using the search module and the search module related APIs and we are not declared here. So I'm going to declare that in slash search and I'm going to pass it as an argument also search module. And if I just go back to my NetSuite and I refresh the same suitelet URL page, now I can see this sub list with one result and only the customer is being set. The reason why it is just showing one result is because we have just set the line number as zero and there is no other line numbers being set. And also we have two results, but in our speed, it just displays one result. So we have to increment the number and keep on adding all the lines as per our results. So for that reason, I'm going to declare a line counter here by initializing it to zero. And I'm going to copy this line counter to this line number. And after adding all the line or setting all the line uh, field values, we will increase this line counter by one. So we have just set only customer. So let's set other fields like internal id and the transaction number so let me paste those code here so i have set all three fields and we have this line counter also being incremented so let's upload this code and test our code one more time so let me just go back to our basic form and refresh the same page this time we can see both the results being displayed here and we have not checked any of these checkboxes now let's try to validate this form, the basic form, like how it works and all those things. So as per our intention of this video, we have achieved what we want. So in this form, we're going to try now validating few fields, whether this mandatory will work or not. So I'm going to enter ADSF and leave this last name as it is without providing any value. And let's click submit. Now by default, if you see, NetSuite provides me error like provide or please enter values for last name. And if you clearly notice in our code, we did not add any kind of validations or background code or some other logics to check the validation. We just mentioned whether the uh, field should be mandatory or not by using a method called as or a property called as is mandatory. So that is working as expected. Now let's see the email field. So I'm going to enter. And if I just tab off by default, it shows please enter a valid address. So I'm going to enter some valid address here. Now let's enter these values also. And if I just check whether my checkbox works for user, it works. And let's see whether the more call button works. The more call button also works. Let's see whether unmore call button works. Yes, unmore call button works. Let's try one more more call and try to uncheck it manually. That also works. Now let's try to reset whether our reset button works, which is provided from NetSuite Script API. Let's try to reset. The reset button also works. Now let's try to enter a few more values in our first name, last name, and mail and let's try to submit the button and let's say we select it also and if we submit where it goes what happens when we click the submit button we will see that in the next video